Hey guys, it's Leon. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't already, please uh, consider subscribing and checking out some of my other content. Uh, otherwise, let's get straight into it. Uh, I want to talk to you guys about how you can get the most out of your uh, fractal Axate, or really, for that matter, any modeler. All of these things that I'm going to talk about port really well to things like the Helix or the Kemper. Um, although there are a few very specific things I'll talk about using the fractal unit that sort of makes sense in uh, the language and the terms that they use to describe them. So, uh, yeah, um, some general advice as well as some specific advice. So, uh, getting straight into it, I think before you even, you know, worry about trying to create tones or anything, the first thing is that you make sure that your unit's not clipping and you set up all the gain structure correctly. So what I mean by that is you've got your guitar uh, and you plug it into the input of the unit, which you can't really see, it's over here, um, and you'll see that there's, you know, if you say you're using input one and you're plugging your guitar in, uh, the thing that they talk about on the fractal units is, you know, tickling the red. So you want to make sure that when you're playing, um, I'll actually try and move the camera so that you can see that, that, you know, if you play really, really, really hard, that you can actually start to see the red LEDs uh, starting to fire up. It doesn't mean that the unit's clipping, it just means that, you know, you've kind of got the optimal amount of input. So uh, I will see if I can uh, hopefully play something. Uh, it should be fairly easy. I'll just play the open strings uh, so I can show you guys this. Let's do that straight away. So uh, we're getting in here. Hopefully, yeah, there you go. You can see the, uh, you can probably see the little red light from my GoPro as well. Uh, but there's the instrument input. And then if I... <laughs> So when I'm sort of giving it everything that I can give there, I'll put my camera back down, uh, you can see that the little uh, red LEDs lining up, and that's a good thing. The other thing to check as well is that uh, your output is not clipping, because that's going to sound absolutely terrible. You get digital distortion there, and the, the way that you can tweak that is you can bring down the level in the amp block, you can bring down the level in the cab block, or you can bring the level down in the output section. Uh, however you do it, I'd really recommend that you do it the same in all your presets so that you've got sort of uh, volume matched presets so that your gain structure is consistent so that say you're doing a gig uh, you go from your you know dual rectifier preset where you're playing something to I don't know your Fender Twin preset for another song that there's not a massive jump in the volume and that if there is then you know exactly where to go to adjust it so that's the first thing I talk about before you even get into any of the specifics of making sounds, make sure you get your gain structure right, uh, just like anything else. It's obviously a lot harder with a real pedal board to do that, but uh, these modelers normally make it really, really easy. On the topic of tones and actually making some sounds, the number one, number one thing that I find that makes my workflow for creating presets and creating tones easier is using the editor, uh, which again, I'm gonna pick up the GoPro and spin you guys around. I have no idea if this looks any good. Uh, hopefully you can't read my emails, not that there's anything interesting in there, but you can see that I'm using Axe Edit there uh, with uh, the most recent, <coughs> sorry, I should say the most recent version of it. I just updated to um, the latest beta firmware and I always forget uh, that you have to go through and refresh Axe Edit or perhaps download the newest version. But once you've got that, I just find it so much easier. Um, I've got computer monitors in here and my Mac hooked up. Uh, it just makes creating tones so easy. And if I want to change something, you know, it's just if I want to muck around with something. Say I want to muck around with a pitch block in this preset. So um, I've got, I can just click on it, double click it, it'll turn it on. And I want to change, say, the mix from 25% to 50%, all the way to 100%. I can do it with the click of a couple of a button. Uh, with the click of a couple of buttons rather than having a menu surf or anything like that. So there is one other point, one really, really important point that I'd stress if, you wanna, if you're new to the unit and you want to make some tones, uh, get the editor. Just makes workflow so ridiculously easy. Okay, so that's for creating tones. What about when you've got something set up and you want to go do a session or you want to go, more importantly, and do a gig? Uh, how should you organize your sound? Say you have, you need... A couple of different gain levels basically you might need a crunchy sound or a clean sound a lead sound a boost something like that um, 
how would you construct that with a unit like this, which seems to just be this, you know, big black box um, with so many possibilities going on in it. Whereas if you were using a real amp and real pedals, it would be really obvious, you know, maybe you had a pedal switcher or something, how you would set things up. You can see where the wires are going in that. So third thing that I would talk about using uh, in particular with Fractal Axe 8, like I said again, any modeler, using scenes. Uh, I think on the Helix they call them snapshots. I think on the Kempo, you know, you'd use performance mode or something like that. I haven't had a lot of experience with either of those units, but using scenes rather than using different presets. Um, with the Fractal units, there is a switching lag, which I believe is a uh, restriction of the way they've actually, you know, had to implement their DSP code uh, in order to, you know, use the secret source or whatever it is to get the most out of the actual tones, the payoff is that there's a switching lag. Um, so using different presets for different sections of songs uh, is a little bit restrictive. However, there is this kind of inbuilt, uh, essentially like a pedal board switcher or if you're running a rack, like, you know, something akin to uh, uh, like a Bradshaw style system where you can just press one button and it'll change multiple effects and multiple settings at once. For example, uh, this is my main gigging patch that I've got at the moment uh, that I use to play shows with Ragdoll and it's, I've got on scene one and button number one, I've got my main heavy sound. <laughs> which I probably need for 90% of the gig. Uh, maybe 5% of the time I need to play lead, which I've got sitting on number four, which is as far away as possible, so scene four. And that kicks on a delay, kicks on the boost in the amp block, a drive pedal, and as well as that, there's a slight volume boost. So... <laughs> with that all day on scene four and I'd probably spend you know 90% of my time at home actually playing on scene four whereas I'd actually play 90% of the time on scene one at a gig um, filling in the remaining percentage of the time I need a rhythmic delay uh, sync to the tap tempo so my scene two does that <laughs> For one section of one song, I need that same sound, but with a rotary speaker emulation, so that's my scene three. So that when I'm playing a gig, I only really have to think about one, two, three, four. I know where my preset tones are, and I don't get any switching lag or anything like that just by using the scenes. And if I wanted to create another patch based off this one with you know as many as eight scenes, um, I can do that. So using scenes is really, really important. The fourth thing on that same topic of scenes is using scene controllers. You probably noticed, uh, well, I hope it came across. I'm not running the audio direct. It's just the GoPro audio at the moment, but I've got a lot more gain happening on scene one than I do on scene two. If I turn that delay off, can hear there's a considerable difference in the amount of gain happening there and I'm doing that two ways. I'm using a drive pedal in front of the amp with the gain set on zero and the level and ten and that's sort of to tighten up the response so that's not really contributing too much actual gain. So what I've done is I've assigned a scene controller which is really easy to find in Axe Edit under the modifiers menu uh, and that basically acts like a third hand which turns the gain up or down depending on the scene. I think I have it at about 55% for scene one and I think I have it at about you know, 30 or 35% for scene two and scene three, uh, which I guess for me, you know, if any of you out there have used channel switching amps, it's really hard to match the volume level. Uh, often you just want the same thing with less gain or with more gain and you just want to press on one button. So this gives me that virtual channel selection thing uh, without actually having to use the XY switching again, which would create a uh, a short audio lag or changing to another preset, I can just do that with a scene controller and control the amount of gain. You can actually set a scene controller uh, to any modifier. So for example, if you wanted the delay um, you know, level or the delay feedback to be different on different scenes, you could set scene controllers up to do that to change the gain, to change you know, the stereo image and things like that. So the scene controllers to me are definitely one of the most powerful functions of the fractal units that uh, I think 
uh, is really, really overlooked and is probably um, you know, one of the most powerful solutions to a lot of the problems that people have with these units. So, number five, when we're actually talking about tones and we're talking about creating tones and translating what you might create in the studio as opposed to what you might create to play live, I think the cabs or the impulse responses are the most overlooked and, you know, most underused sort of selection. If you And I'm very guilty of this as well because, you know, I have my go-to cabs that I use the majority of the time I create a preset and, you know, I'll play around with the amp block and I might not be, you know, getting what I want out of it and I always forget uh, to play around with the, uh, the cab selection. Whether you use the factory cabs, whether you use third-party IRs and load them in, uh, there's a lot of scope uh, and a lot of variation to be had in those IRs, even if you keep everything else in your rig the same. For example, uh, with this particular preset I've got set up, I'm using some of the Justin York uh, bipolar IRs. Uh, what is it? 57MC and 121.1, so I've got those mixed together. I really like the way that works, um, especially live. It's, you know, there's a good amount of sizzle and a good amount of cut. Uh, but, for example, I'll play you something and then I'll switch over to one of the factory caps just to show you how different, uh, you know, your choice of IR can be. <laughs> switch it over to one of the factory cabs. That's not one of the factory cabs at all, I lie. Let's fix that really, really, really quickly. Uh, so just while this loads of the cabinets, I'm going to play guitar. There we go. So I'm going to choose, I'm on uh, firmware 8.02 beta, and there's these five new mixes, and I'm going to choose factory cab number 188. Justin York one. Completely changes the character of what's going on. And furthermore, when you're playing around with the cab block, the thing that I find makes the biggest difference are the low cut and the high cut parameters. For example, if I turn the low cut down so it's having less of an effect, I'll take it down to 20 hertz. <laughs> a little bit woofy, so I normally adjust it to about 80 or 100 hertz, which to me tightens up the low end response, doesn't get in the way of the bass uh, when you're, you know, recording or playing a gig, and uh, yeah, it just feels good to play, so I'll do that. And the high cut's really powerful as well, I'm going to turn the high cut off. Yeah, there's a lot of fizz in there, which if you're using a uh, full range system is one of the big things that people complain about. How do I get rid of that fizz from my modeler? Well, the high cut in the cab block seems to do it. And at low volume levels, that can make it sound a little dull, but remember you've got this Fletcher Munson effect with the way you hear treble and bass frequencies, so the louder your rig gets, the more you hear those treble and bass frequencies and the more you're going to get that really, really annoying fizz, uh, as opposed to, you know, I guess what people talk about with like a sizzle, that thing which is good, which you want in there, which cuts, as opposed to fizz, which makes it sound, you know, digital. Anyway, there's five really important things to think about when you're using uh, your Fractal Axe 8 or Axe of X2 or basically any modeler. Uh, again, thank you so much for putting up with my waffling and uh, putting up with my playing. And if you like it, please subscribe and uh, you know, be sure to check out some of the other videos.